let's start addressing some of these trades. Bill Simmons, I know you're listening, Bill. I know you're on my patron, Bill, because you be jacking my takes all the time. But I digress. He had proposed a trade. They send away the number two pick. This is a three-team trade where the Warriors would get Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, and the number 19 pick. The number two pick goes to Indiana, and Brooklyn gets Victor Oladipo. Now, I'm going to address the Nets side of things first. I think the Nets are the least likely to do this. To me, I'm not messing with Oladipo. I like him. He's a nice guy, right? He can sing. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it, when he's healthy, he's a great athlete. When he's healthy, he's a great athlete. He hasn't proven that he's recovered from the torn quadricep. That's a unique injury. That's a weird injury. From what I understand, that shit tore off the femur. So I don't know if he's ever going to be the same. And I understand the Nets, they're all in. Star power, Brooklyn. And he would be the third guy, ideally on paper. But now you're looking at KD coming off an Achilles. Kyrie's always hurt. And then your third guy's Oladipo? So... That would scare me away if I was the Nets. I think the Pacers getting the number two pick, I don't think they could do this fast enough. You get a young guy where that's their only chance to really retain stars is they've, they've got to be homebred, right? You know, they've made some nice trades, but you get the number two pick and you get rid of a guy who doesn't seem like he wants to be there on a big contract. I mean, that would just be an amazing deal for the Pacers. Now for the Warriors, it's not exciting, right? It's it's maybe the least exciting potential move that I've seen proposed, but that also means that it's kind of like the safest one. It immediately helps us. It immediately helps us with known young commodities. We get a lot more athletic. And again, these guys are just entering their prime, but they're both proven. Jared Allen is like a smart JaVale McGee. <laughs> And you know Kerr would love that, right? And then Dinwiddie, you know, he uh, he's a bucket getter, man. I, I, I did a little Dinwiddie piece when he broke out his first year. Uh, it wasn't his rookie year because he, he he was drafted by Detroit. He's had an interesting path to, to where he's at now. But I spotted him early. I was like, oh, this kid, he has an awkward swagger and a uh, an awkward rhythm is what I should say, but his length and ability to get to the basket. The one thing that I would point out is that Dinwiddie needs the ball. And so you'd play him, he'd be your third guard, right? He's your guy, he comes off the bench and he you put the ball in his hands with the second unit and he can be that score as good as any of them in the league. I think the one thing that you would ask is depending on how the Warriors really feel about pool right now. If they're really high on him, and I'm not saying they shouldn't be, like we've all seen his progress, um, they could convince themselves that Poole is going to be the same caliber player Dinwiddie is very soon here as a third guard because Dinwiddie would take the role that Poole is fighting to get right now. But all in all, I don't hate it for the Warriors. I don't, but I, I, I don't think the Nets do it. I think that would be wild for them. Shout out Emily, another longtime patron. And this has been a question that's been proposed to me from a lot of people. And it more or less centers around the Warriors are going after Bradley Beal. I alluded to it in that last video here Friday, I believe it was. I want to speak on it a little bit more. But Emily asked the question, what's the difference between the level of production Bradley Beal versus Andrew Wiggins. How are their games different? First off, Bradley Beal is a three-level scorer. So, he obviously, he shoots the three. He can finish at the rim. He's sneaky athletic and big. He's got a very wide frame, right? He's only 6'3", but he's got, a, I think he's got like a seven-foot wingspan and he's just, he's built like a truck. Um, but he has the midi, right? He can pull up off the dribble where Wiggins currently right now at 25 is really a two level score he'll shoot the three and then we know he can finish well above the rim but Beal Beal's much better at creating his own shot his handle is more advanced and his strength allows him to play through contact better again back to that big frame 
So that is in part why he's a three-level score. I, I think Wiggins can be a three-level score. It wouldn't be his shooting that needs to develop. It's his handle and his body getting a little stronger because when you talk about the, the second level, so I'm talking about like the elbow, the free throw line, right? That sweet spot between pick and roll action and all that, it's coming back, right? But how you get there is an advanced handle and then strength, the ability to take contact and absorb it and rise up there. And so Wiggins could get there, but he's not there yet. And Beal has that. So he's a three-level scorer. And then most of all, I think it's mentality, right? Beal is much more thirsty to score. Like he's shown that kill gene. He, he's a thirsty scorer. You look at his numbers this year, 36 and four. That's crazy. Those are superstar numbers. They're a little misleading here because mind you, Wall was out. They have a horrendous roster. I like Hachimura, but I mean, he was chipped up. He didn't play a whole lot either. But Beal had essentially no other mouths to feed on that team. And he was literally out there playing 2K. Like he, he was out there in the my player, just like trying to rack up the XP, right? He was out there just, just really getting off, doing whatever he wanted. And to his credit, he did it. And they weren't that bad. Like he had some 50 point performances. It, it, frankly, it was impressive. But again, you need to add that context of there was no other mouths to feed. It was an all you can eat. And he did it. He, he, he put up major numbers. Now, I think you put Wiggins on that Wizards team last year. I think he's at least given you 25 a night. He's not as insatiable a scorer as Beal is. That's a genetic thing. That doesn't you don't gain that. Beal, I guarantee you, when Beal was 10 years old in his little junior basketball league, he wasn't passing the ball. That's just, it's just in him. He's a scorer. I do think Wiggins has more talent. Like you look at the pedigree, Air Canada, the number one pick, talent. Don't confuse that. Some people think when you say talent, I guess it's, it's a subjective thing what people think talent is. But Wiggins is more talented. But can he realize it? Right? That's the question. The other thing that I would point out if this were a move that were to be made is we've heard whispers for years and years about the Bradley Beal, John Wall power dynamic in Washington. And I think it's fair to blame most of it on Wall, honestly. Like, look, <laughs> I almost had, I, 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 I used to empty the clip on Wall. At this point, I feel kind of bad for him, but I'll put it to you like this. John Wall's just not a professional. You know how when you hear someone say, oh, he's a pro's pro, he's a real pro. John Wall's just not a pro. He doesn't do the things to be a pro. And so that's why I would blame probably any of that behind the scenes stuff more so on Wall because Beal appears to be a pro. But I do also think it's fair to ask, how would Beal feel as a third option a lot of the time on this Golden State team? It's a different thing, like we just saw AD and LeBron and why their chemistry works so well is because AD ultimately is a natural Pippen, is a natural Robin. We've talked about this, right? He slides into that number two spot perfectly and that's what's so optimal. Look, if you were gonna say to me, Steph and Clay, they've, they've lost a step. They're no longer dominant. Then yeah, Beal right now would be great because he could slide in and, and kind of become the new young alpha and Steph and Clay could fall back, right? But that's not the case. Like I said, Steph and Clay, I think have at least two or three more years of being able to be the guy, being dominant, at least two or three. And so now the real question becomes, who's the better third option, Wiggins or Beal? And then all of a sudden that alpha lead dog kill gene stuff, not only is it maybe not as important, but it could, actually become a hindrance to the overall chemistry of the team. You see what I'm saying here? Like Wiggins' docile demeanor, for a lack of a better term, or his willingness to kind of just get in where he fits in, serves the third option better than an alpha scorer like Beal. Now, there's a counter to that too, right? You could look at me and say, well, hey, Steph and Clay have already proven they can welcome a lead dog Look what they did with Kevin Durant, right? Like, they've there's no problem with that. You want to talk about an alpha score? They had no problem with KD. But then again, you're talking about the greatest scorer of this generation in his prime. 
And I like Bradley Beal, man, but he he's a 6'3", 27-year-old shooting guard. He has probably another two or three years left in his prime. So his window matches the core, right? Like, you know, he right now he's in his prime. And why I say he only has two or three is because he's a little more reliant on his physical traits and he's strong and all that, but he's still in, he's still 6'3". Right. So I don't see Bradley Beal at like 32, 33 still being an all star player is what I'm getting at here. But right now the window fits. Mind you, when Beal is 30 and presumably probably starting to slow down, maybe no longer an all star caliber player, Wiggins will be in his prime at 28 years old and with his size, plenty of years to go. So for me, yeah, I'd swap Wiggins right now for Beal. I would. Mostly just for Steph and Clay and Dre. Like, all right, y'all boys, here, we're going to give you a proven guy in his prime right now, a third guy. I'm not too worried about the dynamic. We've seen Beal and Steph interact. It seems like they've got somewhat of a relationship. We've seen Beal and Draymond interact on the court, right? Look, I like Beal. I think he would fit in. I think it would be a good match. Now, when you throw in the second pick and perhaps Minnesota's pick next year, that's when I hit the bricks. That's when I hit the brakes because now basically you're saying Wiggins and Wiseman for Beal, that's mortgaging too much of the future for ultimately who is someone who is a tier two star. Beal's about as good of a, two, a tier two guy as you can get. He really is. He's a, he's a legit all-star, but he's a tier two guy and now you're mortgaging the future and a guy in Wiggins who could eventually get to Beal's level. So that's you know, all those deals and those rumors out there. Look, I wouldn't be terribly mad about it, but I've seen the ones I've seen where it's like multiple picks and Wiggins. Nah, not going to be able to do it. Is that what Jalen says? What kind of what kind of spray paint does Jalen use on that hairline? 